Today, I'm going to talk about OSHA, helping to keep you safe at work in the United States. So what is OSHA? OSHA is an acronym that stands for the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. It was originally created in 1970 through the Occupational Safety and Health Act. OSHA is part of the U.S. Department of Labor, so the head of OSHA reports directly to someone who sits on the cabinet of the president. So they report to the head of the Department of Labor. So it's a pretty powerful position, a very powerful organization. The main purpose of OSHA can be broken down into two parts, one focusing on the employer and one focusing on the employee. So each employer shall furnish to each of his employees employment and a place of employment which are free from recognized hazards that are causing or are likely to cause death or serious physical harm to his employees. Also, each employer shall comply with occupational safety and health standards under this act. The second section focuses on the employee. Each employee shall comply with occupational safety and health standards and all rules, regulations, and orders issued pursuant to this act which are applicable to his own actions and conduct. So not only does the employer have to provide a safe environment and a safe job, but the employees themselves need to act in a safe manner. All right, great. So that was kind of the mission statement of OSHA. But what does OSHA actually do? And what are some topics covered in the OSHA manual and the rules? Well, OSHA sets and enforces standards. There's around 40,000 inspections a year. OSHA provides training, outreach, education, and assistance programs. Now some of the topics that you can find in the regulations are bloodborne pathogens, drug use, eye wash stations, hazard communications, globally harmonized system, heat hazards, indoor air quality, inspections, ladders, mold, noise, personal protective equipment, slips, trips, and falls, and workers' rights. These are just a few of hundreds of topics that OSHA goes very deep and complex with. So there's all sorts of rules and regulations, all to keep people safe. And it should be noted that there's a variety of topics. You know, when it comes to ladders, there may not be as much info as there is about indoor air quality. Or the rules themselves may be more simple and easy to understand. But it's also something that's being continuously updated. You know, if new types of hazards are discovered, Eventually, they will be added into the rules. Great. So we have a mission statement. We have these rules and regulations. Why does it matter? Well, here are some interesting statistics that I hope you find interesting. These are from 2014, collected from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. In 2014, 4,821 people died. They're dead due to work-related injuries. Uh, breaking some of those down, transportation killed 1,984 people, slips, trips, and falls, 818. You really don't always think about that, slipping and tripping and falling on things. That is one of the big killers across multiple industries. Violence from persons or animals, 765. Now, a big chunk of those are in agriculture, you know, um, an animal fighting back or something like that, someone being trampled. Um, so they're not all people killing other people. Um, contact with objects and equipment, 715 deaths. Harmful substances or environments, 390. Fires and explosions, 137. I think it's interesting that it's so much lower than a lot of the others. You think workplace accidents, and I think a lot of people imagine flames, explosions, electricity, but really... People are tripping and falling on things or crashing their car on a work trip. Those are the big killers. Looking at some of the industries, I thought this was interesting. Those who work in financial activities, 117 people died from fatal injuries. I, I believe a big chunk of those were violence related. Educational services, 40 people died educating others. Now, looking at things that aren't fatal, total non fatal injuries and illnesses, Roughly 3 million people were affected with a non-fatal injury or illness in 2014. That is 3.2% of the workforce. 
So don't think just because you don't work at a factory or mining that OSHA doesn't play a role in your life. Even teachers, financial advisors, they can die at work. And even if you're not dying, 3% of the workforce is affected with some sort of non-fatal injury or illnesses. OSHA covers things like that. They want to protect you even from minor injuries. In 2014, there were 50,000 serious violations of OSHA code. The top five offenders are areas broken, fall protection, hazard communication, scaffolding, respiratory protection, and lockout tagout were the top five violations. So people are dying every year at their jobs, and millions of people are getting injured, and serious violations are very plentiful. So it is important to have some sort of agency that will help protect you. All right, so I've so I've sounded very pro OSHA, pro the need for an agency that helps protect employees. But I would like to point out too, within reason, there are criticisms against OSHA, and many of them are fair. I think in general, though, safety, at least in manufacturing, can often be viewed as something that is blown out of proportion or is a waste of time. And that really does vary a lot, too. People understand you don't need to leave flammable objects around, but a lot of people don't want to be told you have to wear a mask with something that you've been working with your whole life, and suddenly now you need protection from it. OSHA will oftentimes fine companies a large penalty so that the violation does not occur again. For example, Walmart was fined $190,000 in 2013 due to safety issues with trash compacting. Some people believe uh, that these fines are ridiculous and they hinder businesses from operating effectively. While Walmart might have the money to handle this, some smaller companies may struggle with the fines they are hit with. And that is a valid argument as well. There is also the argument that some regulations are unwarranted and don't allow American companies to compete globally. And this is a good argument as well. Uh, one example I have from real life is I remember going on a tour of a paper facility, a paper mill. And one of the managers there talked about how they had to have protective ventilation in certain areas for the employees and also for the environment. So this is kind of an EPA issue as well. But he talked about how companies in China didn't have to follow these rules and thus could offer a cheaper product. And that made competition tough. And I think there is a good argument there as well. I will say, though, the experiences I've had learning about OSHA rules and regulations make most of them sound fair and reasonable and not too exaggerated. And it's not like OSHA is going around finding every small problem and finding companies for it. Generally, as long as you're cooperative, OSHA will give you a warning first and then come back later for a secondary inspection. As I noted before, 50,000 serious violations. A few hundred of those were repeat offenses. So sometimes companies deliberately break the regulations because they don't agree with it. So there are criticisms of OSHA, and there are good arguments on both sides. But I think we can all agree that safety is good. Besides OSHA, there are other national organizations that care about safety. There's the Mine Safety and Health Administration, so they'd be more specifically focused on the mining industry. You have the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, uh, NIOSH. They are through the CDC, I just recently found out. So they're kind of the CDC's take on occupational safety and health. Then there's the National Safety Council. They care about work and society as well. These are just three examples of other organizations that care about safety. I'm sure there's many others out there, both on a national and more local level. So you like safety? Maybe you want to do it for a living. What types of jobs are there in safety? Well, here's a list of a few titles. You can be an environmental health and safety manager. You can be a safety coordinator. You can be a health and safety trainer. There's consultants who focus on safety consulting. You can be a safety engineer. So even in the world of safety, there's all sorts of variances. You know, do you want to focus more on training, research, managing, designing? So even in safety, you can find really what caters to you best. I'll end it on this. 
If you don't want to do safety for a living, but you do care about improving safety at your workplace, what can you do? Well, for one, you can do rapid, frequent safety training sessions, maybe once a week or once every other week. Make sure they're just 15 minutes or less, and, and focus on one specific topic that OSHA covers. Uh, some of the ones I mentioned before are great starting places. Slips, trips, and falls, fire hazards. Uh, when I was a quality engineer, I got assigned a few safety duties. So once a week, I would train some people in the quality department. I would let them know about safety issues and what they can do to avoid them and prevent them. So really focus on things that are relevant for your coworkers or that you think your company would care about a lot. It's also very important, too, um, to involve those interested. So if anyone at your company is involved in safety and you have the power to connect them to the safety coordinator or get them involved, please do. From a legal standpoint, it's great to actually have the employees sign records when they've been trained with something safety-wise. It's good for the company's viewpoint when it comes to lawsuits, and it's just good to have record of, okay, these employees have been trained on fire extinguishers, for say, or they know to not lift too much and risk hurting their backs. That's very good as well. Also, don't be scared to whistleblow. So OSHA has a whistleblower status. It prevents your employer from taking retaliation against you uh, for reporting safety concerns. So if you report a safety concern and your company gets fined, your company can't do anything about it. You know, they can't retaliate against you. There's many specific laws preventing them from doing that. And OSHA as well will keep things anonymous in most cases. You can submit the info online. You can call your local office mail a form, even fax if you want to fax for some reason. So don't be scared to whistleblow. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you like it, please subscribe. I'm trying to do engineering videos on a variety of topics, both the technical and the practical sides. Thanks for watching. I hope you know a lot more about OSHA now and general statistics on safety in the workplace.